So next up is Lisa Gardner. Um, Lisa is an educational designer with Spark. Hi, everyone. I was expecting to have to say that while my first slide was running, so. <laughs> now I'm just going to take a moment. Hi. <laughs> OK, now I'll start. <laughs> So I'm going to share with you today an intersection of art and science. Uh, this is something that interests me quite a bit. Several years ago, I was in an art class, and the instructor looked over my shoulder, and he looked at the landscape painting I was making, and he suggested that I add more atmosphere. Now, I work with people who have a lot of perspective on the atmosphere, so I thought the last thing I was going to forget to add to my painting was the atmosphere. But he was talking about atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective is the illusion of depth created when objects in the background have more subdued colors than objects in the foreground. And this is one of those occasions when art and science start to blur together. That is, uh, scientists have perspective on the atmosphere, and artists have atmospheric perspective. And like most places where art and science overlap, Leonardo da Vinci, it turns out, was the first person to investigate. So he recorded how distant mountains appear more blue than nearby mountains. And he suggested to artists that if a mountain is five times further away, it be painted with five times more blue. And it turns out that he followed his own advice. If we take a look, if you can look past the woman in this picture at the beautiful <laughs> landscape beyond, and uh, you can see that Leonardo da Vinci used bluer colors in the background, more muted colors. And so he was following his own advice. Now, there was something different today that he could not observe. Uh, smoggy cities like Hong Kong, shown here, uh, weren't around when Leonardo was making his observations. And I think we can say that air pollution adds to atmospheric perspective. Now, it turns out that the rise in air pollution and the rise in landscape art just happened to coincide. <laughs> Do I get more seconds now? OK. Um, so, <laughs> OK. So the Industrial Revolution started about the same time that Western artists were going outside to paint uh, what was really outside, like George Innes in the Lackawanna Valley here in, in 1855 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Take a look at the background. There's smoke coming out of Scranton. In the foreground, there's deforestation. He may have inadvertently captured the start of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> And so George Innes, later in life, painted uh, Niagara Falls. And uh, art historians have wondered whether the smoke billowing from the background was a commentary on industrial development around Niagara Falls, or if it was just a helpful focal point. Um, <laughs> Edward de Edgar Degas painted smoke in the French countryside. He was one of the Impressionist painters, and his uh, fellow Impressionist, uh, Claude Monet, also wanted to paint the industrial atmosphere. So he went to London. Uh, he met the London fog there, which is not just a khaki-colored trench coat, but it's a khaki-colored fog that is a mixture of coal smoke from coal fires around the turn of the century um, mixed with the natural fog. And he and other Impressionist painter, painters wanted to show the effects of light and atmosphere on objects. And so he painted the, um, a series of paintings of the Houses of Parliament in London under different light conditions. And in some of these paintings, it's even hard to see the Houses of Parliament because um, of the light conditions, really, in the atmosphere. And so uh, he painted at sunset, at day, at dusk, and really got a different uh, color palette each time. So the same smog that was causing health problems all over London was actually an inspiration for Monet. <sighs> but a lot has changed since these painters were capturing the start of the Industrial Revolution. And we know more now about the health impacts of smog. And I think this has changed the way artists portray air quality as well. So this example here is also from London in 2012. Uh, this was an animation of sketches of the artist's young son breathing in and out. And it was made to uh, bring attention to modern day air quality issues. And here we have The Invisible Connectedness of Things by Kim Abelis, 
which was at and car in two thousand and twelve and a little pitch her work will be back in two thousand and fourteen and she had dinner plates with smog stencils on them both beautiful and disgusting and then there are those today who wish to portray the landscape as they wish it was for example these tourists in hong kong are taking photos with a false background a smog free version of the city which is more or less an idealized landscape thanks